welcome to the channel physics by iitians in this video lecture we shall discuss some standard problems on statistical mechanics which are from previous net papers csir net gate iit jam like papers so this first problem we will discuss is from csir net 2011 so the question is a particle is confined to the region x is greater than equals to 0 by a potential which increases linearly as u of x equals to u not x so the mean position of the particle at temperature t is how much so let's understand the question first you have been given the potential energy in form of u not x and x limit is greater than equals to 0 you have to find out the x average you can use the tr traditional method to find out x average that is x average equals to integration over 0 to infinity as the limit here from 0 to infinity into x into function of x that is the function which has been given and integration 0 to infinity f of x dx so this is the traditional method you have to do the integration and you find out x average value but there is another shortcut way and the shortcut way is the virial theorem so the virial theorem what does it tell you that the if the potential varies as x to the power n plus 1 which we are given as x to the power n so u equals to here u not into x so x to the power n plus 1 so this is this can be written as x to the power n plus 1 so the potential varies as x to the power n plus 1 the kinetic energy average and the potential energy average relation is t average is the kinetic energy average equals to n plus 1 by 2 into total potential energy average so these are all the total kinetic energies and potential energies and their averages so the given value of potential that is ux equals to u not x where here n equals to 0 so t average can be written as half into v average because you put the value 0 at n okay so the equipartition theorem tells us that e average is total energy is the 3 by 2 kbt so e average is the kinetic energy plus potential energy average so that will become 3 by 2 kbt now in place of t average what we have found out we have found that t average equals to half v average so we can write here half into v average plus v average equals to 3 by 2 kt so v average can be written as kbt now v average is the potential energy average is has been given as u not into x so v average can be written as u not into x average so u not into x average equals to kbt so x average equals to kbt divided by u not look here you have just done only two or three steps you have been given ux equals to u not x you take the average from the virial theorem you find out the total energy and you put it in the equipartition theorem and you can find out the position x average of that system okay so we understand what is the virial theorem actually virial theorem is in mechanics it it is in classical mechanics there is a definition we can find out in quantum mechanics also so we will talk about here the classical virial theorem and this virial theorem provides us a general equation that relates the average over the time of the total kinetic energy of a stable system of discrete particles bound by potential forces with that of the total potential energy of the system so this theorem tells us that t average that is the total potential energy uh, sorry total kinetic energy equals to minus half of sum over k equals to 1 to n that is the discrete n particles to average over fk into rk so the total kinetic energy t average of n particles and fk represents the force on the kth particle and that location is the position that is rk and this angle bracket present the average over the time of the enclosed quantity and this why this is called virial theorem this is a latin word vis okay so that means the force or energy that is is called it is virial theorem and it was uh, given by its, its technical definition by rudolf clausius in 1870 now suppose we have a force okay the force between any two particles of the system 
and the results the force is resulting from a form of potential energy and the form of potential energy is v of r that is a function of put position that is a into r to the power n and that is proportional to some power n of the interparticle distance r so the vdl theorem what tells us this is the r is the interparticle distance between them and the potential form vr equals to alpha r to the power n so we can take that 2 into t average equals to n into average of v total that is total potential energy so 2 in n by 2 that is t average that is the total kinetic energy average equals to n by 2 into total potential average so don't be confused here just they write the form as r to the a alpha a r to the power n or alpha r to the power n we have written the same formula with r to the power n plus 1 so which makes this n to n plus 1 so look here the same formula that is the potential energy varies as x to the power n plus 1 and we get t average as n plus 1 by 2 into v average so you can uh, remember this uh, formula to find out if you are given the potential energy a form of potential energy you can find out the position average very easily you don't have to find out the integration okay so come to the second question the second question is a very basic and easy uh, easy question okay. and it was come in December 2011 so the question is the total uh, the internal energy E of a system is given by E equals to V into S cube divided by V into N where B is a constant and other symbols have their usual meaning the temperature of the system is equals to how much so total energy has been given and you have to find out the temperature of the system okay and look here the variation of uh, e is b into s cube divided by v into n so n is here also included and all symbols have their usual meaning so how to find out the temperature look here you have to understand whenever this n value is included okay so you have to put the formula where this n value or change in n value has to be included during the change in the energy of the system so the for the grand canonical ensemble system that is where the change in the number of particles actually n is the number of particles a change in the volume change in the energy all are included so you have to take that system and that system is grand canonical ensemble so there are micro canonical ensemble canonical ensemble grand canonical ensemble okay so we'll talk about this in the later lectures so the temperature of the system to find out first find out the formula that is the dq and dq is the tds okay and this tds will become de plus pdv minus mu dn so t can be written here what is, is it here given this is the s cube so del e by del s you find out okay so look here so e equals to b s cube divided by v into n and if you take del e divided by del s you get that 3 into b into s square divided by n v and that will this will give you t because this t and you are taking as del e divided by del s all the other quantities or the other variation are not taken into account so this formula will give you the temperature now basic question here also that if there the variation in terms of n has to you if you have to find out then you have to take this one the variation of that is ds okay so dn by ds if the variation of dn del n by del s has been given okay so you can write it as del n by del s equals to 1 by mu into t or if the variation in delta v has been given then delta v by del s equals to or p into delta v by del s equals to t so the quantity that depends that what is the answer and which variation you have to take into account look here the variation here in terms of s s square so here so v and n is uh, I mean this thing you have to take only the derivative of s that is del e by del s you get this formula 
and you find out the temperature of the system or if you are finding out the pressure of the system or else you can find out the mu that is the chemical potential of the system you have to utilize this formulas okay so the formula this is the general formula and you have to think the, or you have to choose that which quantity I want to find out I want to find out the answer okay so now come to the next question that consider a Maxwell distribution of the velocity of the molecules of an ideal gas let VMP and VRMS denote the most probable velocity and the root mean square velocity respectively. So the magnitude of VMP divided by VRMS is how much? So the Maxwell distribution formula gives us the um, VMP that is the most probable velocity is root over 2 kT by m and VRMS that is the RMS velocity is root over 3 kT by m. So VMP by VRMS equals to root over 2 kT by m divided by root over 3 kT by m which will give us that root 2 by 3. So option C is the correct option. And this is a very easy question. This is a very easy question and this actually uh, is important for IIT jam gate. Okay, so please remember this formula and also net because this is from la 2012 net question I, uh, I guess. The number next question is the number of ways in which n identical bosons can be distributed in two energy levels that is how much I mean how many how how many number of ways that you can distinct uh, you can uh, distribute n identical bosons into two energy levels so suppose you are giving the boson particles where n i is the total number of particles g i are the total number of energy levels so the number of ways w can be written as ni plus gi minus 1 factorial divided by ni factorial into gi minus 1 factorial here ni is n or sum over ni is n and sum over gi is 2 so ni that is ni is n plus gi means 2 so n plus 2 minus 1 divided by n factorial into 2 minus 1 factorial which gives us n plus 1 factorial divided by n factorial that is n plus 1 factorial you can write it as n plus 1 into n factorial divided by n factorial so it will give you n plus 1 now you have a you can have a natural question that how to calculate any pro probabilities for any system okay so let us find out how to calculate the probabilities for any system so suppose we have taken uh, n identical part uh, identifiable particles I mean we are not taking a general case for Maxwell Boltzmann or Fermi Dirac or FD we are taking it a classical distribution that we can identify these particles and this distributed among n containers or n boxes so the boxes are n1 n2 n3 and so on so the let us take n1 particles within the first container n2 particle is within the second container so we can take for the easiest calculation we take only the two containers that is n1 in the first container and n2 number of particles in the second container so the number of such distribution the number of ways is nc n1 that is n factorial divided by n1 factorial into n minus n1 factorial or equals to n factorial divided by n1 factorial into n minus n1 is n2 so because total n equals to n1 plus n2 so now take the n2 and divide it into two subcontainers or two sub intervals so n2 becomes uh, divided and we take, take within this n2 let n1 number of particles in one subcontainer and n2 number of particles in the other subcontainer where n1 in plus n2 is equals to capital n2 that is n minus n1 so the number of ways of distributing this n2 particles into this um, uh, subcontainer or sorry uh, total n2 particle into this um, subcontainer or the number uh, so it will become n2 c n1 so n2 factorial divided by n1 factorial into n2 factorial okay so let us now divide some more means we take the next n3 subcontainer into uh, divide it more and uh, into more sub intervals that is from n2 n3 we take another 
divider and we give the divide distribute the particles as n2 n3 n4 so we can subdivide the single wall or single box we can sub subdivide this boxes into many boxes and here we can distribute it as n1 n2 n3 okay so if this n1 n2 n3 can be written in the capital that is n1 n2 n3 what will be the formula the formula for distributing this n1 n2 n3 number of particles to this boxes is w equals to n factorial that is the total number of particles divided by n1 factorial to n2 factorial n3 factorial up to n n factorial so the total number of independent ways of arranging n particles among small n containers such that they are that n1 is the first container n2 is the second container is the is will be given by this formula okay so n factorial divided by n1 factorial n2 factorial n3 factorial up to n n factorial and so how do you understand uh, know the probability probability is the number of events divided by total number of events that actual number of events divided by total number of events so actual number of events is w and the total number of events is n to the power capital n n is the small n is the number of containers and capital is the capital n is the number of particles so p can be written as n factorial divided by multiplic uh, multiplication uh, i equals to 1 to n n i factorial into n to the power minus n just you put the w formula here okay and you find out the probability so you have an another question the homework for you let me read the question that the free energy of the gas of n particles in a volume v and the temperature t is given by f equals to n into kbt ln a naught v kbt whole to the power 5 by 2 divided by n where a naught is constant and kb denotes the boltzmann constant so the internal energy of the gas is how much so f has been given and you have to find out the internal energy of the system now you in the comment section you tell me which option is the correct option and if you find any difficulty understanding the series or problems please comment in the comment section we will solve your queries or problems okay friends thank you for watching this video don't forget to like it don't forget to join our test series which is already mentioned in the comment section thank you